Kelly Downs from RIT's University News, and I'm here at NASA in Houston, Texas, where a team from RIT earned a coveted spot to fly aboard the DC-9, NASA's weightless wonder. This research aircraft is the ultimate roller coaster ride, peaking at 34,000 feet over the Gulf of Mexico. The plane follows a parabolic flight path to produce weightlessness. A typical flight consists of about 32 arcs. As the plane climbs towards the top of the parabola, passengers feel the force of nearly two Gs, or twice their body weight. Once the plane starts to go over the top of the invisible arc and begins descending back toward Earth, flyers free fall, experiencing nearly 25 seconds of zero gravity. The passengers, and any objects not nailed down, are weightless. You're floating there in the middle of the aircraft go and your mind's kind of going all over the place saying this isn't right and you're just trying to I guess get your bearings all the time. The plane is more commonly known as the vomit comet because of its reputation to wreak havoc on the human stomach. Another man down, man down. Each year, collegiate teams from all over the country submit proposals to NASA to be part of its Reduced Gravity Student Flight Opportunities Program. The Space Agency selects the top proposals. Greg Sharp, Christopher Ubelacker, Jarrett Whetstone, and James Craven represent RIT. It blew my mind when I first heard that we were going to be accepted into the project, so I'm like, it's a lot of work, but you know, it's completely worth it. In July of 2008, RIT's team heads to Johnson Space Center for a week, which culminates in a climactic 90-minute flight to test an experiment in zero gravity. The RIT team's experiment looks at the feasibility of inkjet printing in a weightless environment. We were testing the ability for inkjet printers, both piezoelectric and thermal print heads, to function in microgravity. RIT is in great company with other big name schools invited to participate, including Texas A&M, University of Kansas, University of Arizona, University of Florida, and University of Texas. Design engineers review the projects to ensure they are safe to fly. This is our uh, test rig, and uh, basically inside we've got our printers, everything is encased within this outer structure. The health and safety of the students during flight is also of the utmost importance. As part of the pre-flight preps, the students go into a high altitude flight chamber to experience the symptoms of oxygen deprivation, what's known as hypoxia. But look for some outward signs of hypoxia. You may start to notice uh, a little bit of belligerence in someone where they're normally cool, calm, and collective, and all of a sudden they want to start a fight. Finally, it's flight day. RIT's team goes up two at a time. First up are Chris and James. It's ready to go. Okay. Uh, we were testing thermal and piezoelectric methods of inkjet printing in microgravity which consisted of two different tests, printing out uh, standard targets on standard letter paper, see if there was any changes in the quality of the print, and uh, we also use a high-speed camera to actually image a droplet from both technologies to see if there's a difference in size, shape, speed, and uh, amount of actual inkjet droplets. Next to fly, Greg and Jarrett. And we're testing printers in zero gravity. And floating all over the place. To begin with, we started setting up the high-speed camera and the printers so that as soon as we hit, um, as soon as we got comfortable with the parabolas, which was about number three, we were able to immediately just get into, uh, get into capturing high-speed video. For long-term space missions, the students believe the printhead technology could potentially be used for other applications besides just printing out sheets of paper. Hopefully the printer will be able to make circuit boards or something similar because the technology just places small volumes of liquid into a very accurate location. So any real application that you would need to do that could potentially use this data. The experiment finds both inkjet printing technologies are capable of working in a weightless environment, but there is room for improvement. In zero gravity, there's no force to hold the moving printer parts in place, which degrades the printer's effectiveness. After the teams get their data collected, it's time for some fun. I had a blast, so uh, 
really excited that I got to go. It was a lot of fun. It was actually pretty fun. You start floating uh, and you wonder what's going on. And your feet have a tendency to easily go above your head. So, did the Vomit Comet live up to its nickname? Sure did. Got a little queasy there, somewhat halfway, but uh, still, still doesn't ruin the experience for me. It did at the end. It was a very rough flight. Uh, weightlessness is quite an interesting experience, as well as the uh, nausea that comes with it. Uh, luckily for me, I did not expel anything. The NASA flight crew includes videographers and photographers who document the students and their experiments. Many of them are RIT alumni. Robert Markowitz, a 1989 RIT graduate, is part of the photography team that provides all the imaging support for Johnson Space Center. He's a frequent flyer on the Vomit Comet. Well, I, actually I tell a lot of people, and especially first time flyers, that the first parabola is the best because it's that totally unexpected, kind of like going on a roller coaster your first time when you go over that big hill, you just don't know what to expect. And so the first parabola is the best, but actually I've been flying now for, oh, how many years, since 1991, and I actually just looked at my logbook the other day and I have over 20,000 parabolas. Some of those parabolas he logged were for the making of the 1995 movie, Apollo 13. Markowitz was the still photographer on the Vomit Comet during the filming, an experience he says was one of the best of his career. Markowitz spent weeks with director Ron Howard and actors Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, and Bill Paxton as they flew the zero gravity arcs to recreate the historic space mission. Of the six-member photography team at Johnson Space Center, half are RIT alumni, all graduates of the Imaging and Photographic Technology program. Lauren Harnett, a 2007 RIT graduate, seen here videotaping, is the most recent of the RIT family to join NASA. So we looked all over the country and still the best qualified candidate came from uh, our program at RIT, so I think it says a lot for the program. RIT alumna Crystal Schroeder knows the value of flying aboard the Vomit Comet as an undergraduate. It ultimately landed her a job at NASA. Schroeder was a member of the RIT student team selected for NASA's first reduced gravity program in 1997. To learn more about this program, visit imaging.rit.edu.